This tells CBS News the United States has been tracking Russia's development of a nuclear-capable anti-satellite weapon in space. The White House has not confirmed if the weapon would have nuclear capabilities, but a spokesman did say it would not be used against humans nor cause physical destruction on Earth. Secretary of State Antony Blinken reiterated that on Thursday the threat is not imminent. This is not an active capability, but it is a potential one that we're taking very, very seriously. The president's focus, President Biden's focus, is on the security of the United States and its people. Let's bring in Dr. Francesca Giovannini. She is executive director of the project on managing the atom at the Harvard Belford Center. Um, let's start with just, are you, are you surprised by this information? Did we know that the Russians were up there with this kind of capability before? Help us understand what seems to be new within the context of what we already knew. John, thank you so much for having me. And I think this is exactly the right question to begin with. In, we should be clear that we knew that the Russians were working on a wide range of capabilities. In fact, if you probably remember in 2018, President Putin during a press conference actually described a series of these new capabilities. Uh, and he even showed this uh, scenario where one of these exotic weapons were going to target President Trump, uh, Mar-a-Lago, uh, Florida residents. So we've always known that the Russians were experimenting with things. In 2019, they've actually tried to test the nuclear-powered uh, long-range cruise missile, which actually ended up in a catastrophic accident. So this does not catch us very much by surprise. Uh, of course, there are a lot of uh, you know questions about what this capability will do. And so we need to be cautious and attentive uh, to track the trajectory of this capability. But it doesn't come as a surprise to the community. And so, Doctor, give us a sense of the range of possible things that um, freedom-loving people should be worried about in terms of what their possible capability could be up there in space. Well, so let me say that there are two scenarios. You know, yesterday we were talking and focusing a lot on uh, what to me was the wrong description, which was a nuclear weapon in space. A nuclear weapon in space does very little. First, first of all, it's a major violation of the Outer Space Treaty, but also the Russians don't need nuclear weapons to destroy American satellites. And American satellites are fundamental for American citizens' lifestyle. If you think about the GPS, if you think about your communication platforms, your systems, everything relies today on satellites. And so being able to degrade or destroy satellites has both military and civilian implications, especially for American society and American defense. But we are not talking about a nuclear weapon in space. This would not constitute a major technological breakthrough for the Russians. Again, if they wanted to target American satellites, they would do it easily with ballistic missiles. I think what we are talking about here is actually probably a little bit more disturbing, which is a nuclear-powered anti-satellite jammer system. Mm. And it is important to make the difference. And your uh, Dr. Richard talked about uh, nuclear-capable. It doesn't mean that this system will carry nuclear weapons, but it means it will be powered by nuclear fission. And this is important because an anti-satellite technology that is powered by nuclear fission would have a much larger range uh, so you'll be able to cover a much larger volume of space. It will be able to target and disrupt more satellites at once, and it will actually be able to last longer in effect. So again, we are not talking about nuclear weapons that will fall from the sky to destroy Washington or New York, but we might see a potential disruption of our communication capabilities. And that, in my view, is actually quite important. Wow. And so it, would that mean that the, the intelligence that they might be concerned about would be that they have such a satellite powered by nuclear fission? Uh, or is it fusion? You can correct me. Or that it is somehow more operational than they might previously have thought? So to be honest, you know, the nuclear power anti satellite technology is not really new. I think it will be interesting to see at what level the Russians decide to develop a, and, and test the system. Um, I think the intelligence right now is probably asking a couple of questions. Uh, one is, what is the degree of development of this program? And also, what other technologies the Russians are developing in parallel? And let's also remember that the Russians have always sought uh, the competition in space as their vital asset. Mm. The Russians believe to have an edge technologically in space, 
And this is a way to remind the Americans that we are the most vulnerable in a potential weaponization of space. This is a way, in my view, to instill fear, not only in the military, but also in the American so, citizens. And so quickly, doctor, I could carry on this conversation all night, but very quickly, what then can be done to counter this capability? Does the U.S. or anybody else have any, any answer to answer this possible advancement in Russian technology? John, two very important points. One is, let me tell you, there is a reason why the U.S. established a U.S. space force uh, precisely to counterattack and counter-respond to this to this new threat. Second, in April 2022, the Americans launched a moratorium against anti-satellite technology that countries should take very, very seriously. And the final point is resilience. The Americans are now building way more hardened satellites that could be able somehow to be better protected. But of course, this is a work in progress. Dr. Francesca Giovannini, very, very helpful with the Belfer Center. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much.